Hey, it's Kate from Coastal Drone, and we have an unboxing video. Maybe not totally a regular unboxing video, but check out what Santa brought. A little bit early. So ultralight, 249 grams. You better bet that was entirely intentional. So the Mavic Mini is pretty revolutionary and pretty disruptive when it comes to drones in Canada. Uh, one of the big regulation pieces is that the Part 9 regulations, where all the drone rules are, they apply to drones between 250 grams to 25 kilograms. Anything above that you need a special flight operations certificate, and anything under that I'm not going to say is unregulated, because there still is one regulation, we'll talk more about that, but um, by being 249 grams, if you don't put the prop guards on and you don't put the stickers on it, um, because that, that'll, then that'll push it up to 250, it uh, allows you to fly this thing without getting a certification uh, or registering your drone or abiding by a bunch of the other regulations that are weight specific. So I can't wait to get into this thing. Let's open it up. DJI is like the apple of uh, the drone industry. Everything is in very nice packaging, but not the easiest to get into. Ooh, I'm so excited. Maybe this is the certification. If you can figure out how to get into the box, then you're allowed to fly it. There it is. Tiny little thing. It's actually quite a bit sm smaller than I thought it was going to be. There it is. Very much palm sized. This is a Tello. So this is the first of DJI's products that were under 250 grams. This thing's like 130 something grams. And there you have it next to you. What's the major yeah, difference between the two of them? This one is not going, it has a camera and it can do video and take photos, but it's more for flying indoors. This thing is not gonna perform in any kind of wind and the camera's not gimbaled. So you're not gonna have control over your shot necessarily. This thing is meant for taking photographs and video and being a lot more capable than something like the Tello. So I know there's a million and a half um, unboxing videos for the Mavic Mini, so I'm not gonna go into the tech specs and all of that, but here it is in comparison to a Mavic 2, and it's pretty substantial. <laughs> It'll be great to get it up and see what the image quality is like between the two, because we've been really impressed with the Mavic 2 so far. It's an insane difference when you think of the regulation as it applies. It really does make the Mavic 2 feel quite heavy. <laughs> just in comparison. So the big difference when you have something that's under the 249 gram is that you are exempt from a lot of the regulations that apply to something that's heavier, but it doesn't mean that it's unregulated. We've seen a lot of discussion on the Facebook groups about what you can and can't do, um, and also what you should and shouldn't do, because there's a difference between something being illegal and something being smart. Um, so, when it comes to where you can fly this, the answer isn't everywhere. Uh, you're still going to have some DJI no-fly zones that show up when you have your phone plugged into the transmitter. You're still going to have um, restrictions within cities. They're going to have their bylaw restrictions um, that they're allowed to do. Though some cities have been taking some liberties with that, so if you think that your city bylaws are too prohibitive, let me know. Um, we can take a look into it. We just um, had some success looking into some of the, the city rules um, around here and got some things changed that makes a lot more sense now. Um, and also with parks, don't forget that with uh, national provincial parks, um, obviously the city parks as well, but they'd be governed under the bylaws. You can't fly these aircraft in provincial or national parks because they are still considered aircraft. Just because they're under 250 grams doesn't change that. It's flying in the sky and there are restrictions on all types of aircraft that are operating. So it's still considered an R-Pass, so it's not something that you can just take and fly wherever. Yeah, so let's take a look at what else is in the box. Obviously you have your transmitter and it looks really similar to uh, the Mavic ones. It has the, um, the sticks that are kind of buried in here so that you can plug them in. It's a little bit more portable. That's cool. 
looks like we've got some instructions in here maybe or these are props probably cords extra sticks props instructions that nobody ever reads but i am female so i will read them this is the extent of the quick start guide <laughs> three pages it looks like ikea instructions and there's one english sentence that tells you how to turn it on these do and don't you have to get this these do and don'ts don't fly it over the barbecue barbecue mavic minis are not good don't use it for grocery shopping but you can put it in a bottle the thing with this is that it's not going to be your only tool if you're serious about filmmaking this is going to be a game changer because it will allow you to take this thing and do some things that your other drones aren't going to be able to do but you better believe that if they start becoming a nuisance, if you start to see sub 250 gram drones kind of blow up in the market and people start doing really stupid stuff with them, I bet we'll see Transport Canada respond by dropping that weight limit, which is something we want to avoid. So be smart, use them for getting those shots in tighter spots that you might not be able to, or to throw in your back pocket while you're going up and doing something that you need to be super, super portable for, but it's not, it's not going to replace your Mavic. It's not going to do all the rest of the shots that, that your other drones are gonna be capable of, but the quality is not bad. Because there's no certification required with this and there's no recreational commercial distinction anymore within the regulations, you can use this for work. You can use this on any type of job site, um, sell the images that it collects if they're, if they're high enough quality where you can get someone to pay for them. You can absolutely do that. There's no requirement to get a special operating certificate or anything to fly for work. Can you fly it in the foyer right now? I mean, I, I could. Am I allowed? I don't know what's going to take a look. Okay. I think we should. I'm turning it on. Let's do it. It's a calibration thing. There we go. We're alive. I can't believe it. This is so easy. And I'm not good. Big firmware. Damn. Firmware update. Okay. Well, that was cool. It was something. We'll get it going for reals. Oh. That's exciting. I can't believe how stable that is.